Right, silence please. Matt, do you stretch it if you need to? Oh, I do need to cough. <coughs> Jesus Christ, man. Is there anything else you need to expel before we start? Do you need to shit what, I don't know, I already, well, I didn't shit myself, but I had a shit already. So. <laughs> wow. Good today. Okay, hello listeners and welcome to episode 52 of the Picky Bastards podcast. Um, this used to be a podcast which was all about arguing about music, but depressingly we've started to agree far too much for my liking in recent episodes. So I decided today, whatever I say is probably a lie because I'm just I just want to argue with these two, so I'm just going to say the opposite. <laughs> but anyway... I'm here with Sam. How are you doing, Sam? I'm good. Ready to argue? Yeah, let's argue. Um, should we just talk about an album that we know we feel differently about, just so we can argue instead of the one we've chosen? <laughs> no, no, no. Please okay. don't make me listen to those albums again. Fair enough, fair enough. And um, Matt as well. How are you doing, mate? Hey. I, to be honest, this sounds like you're putting excuses in for your bad opinions already. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can believe that when you say it in a bit. Um, anyway, the albums that I'm going to be lying about today are The Weather Station with How Is It That I Should Look at the Stars, Heterosexuality by Shamir, Squeeze by Sasami, Pray For Me I Don't Fit In by Melt Yourself Down, and the classic is Plans by Def Cab for Cutie. And then I'll be telling everyone why I love Angel Olsen. Um, Matt's just told me the questions I've got this, this week are terrible, so I'm looking forward to seeing what their answers are. But I'm going to start with Sam. So yep. Sam, which album makes the best use of anger? Great question, by the way. A great question, yeah. Um, I Thank had, you. I didn't have to think about this at all. Obviously, um, that's a lie. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, in the end, I I went with uh, "Squeeze" by Sasami. Um, okay. I actually felt like you choosing kind of the, those two questions of anger and calmness. I, f- I found it interesting in this list because I I hadn't really mm. thought of those things, and I know you say you think of what you would answer for them. Um, But anyway, I I picked this because I feel like um, there's quite a lot of anger in this album, but um, Mm -hmm. I actually think uh, it does a really, really good job of, of using it um, in, in kind of uh, certain, certain songs and other songs being very, very delicate. So it's not like an overwhelming um, sense of like, this is an angry person or this is uh, you, you can tell that there's, there's, there's these really really heavy rock moments um that have like a really big effect um i, I like i took one look at the cover of this album and thought <laughs> oh i know what this is gonna sound like <laughs> the opening song is called skin a rat um i'm gonna <laughs> hate this and then in the end this i absolutely love this album i think it's oh, wow, so okay. like, layered and it's unexpected every song i just goes in a direction that I'm not expecting at all. It kind of sounds, um, it has this like California, LA energy. Uh, I think she's from mm. California. Um, and mm. so it's that kind of sound to, sounded to me like if like Haim like joined a metal band um, <laughs> and it has this like kind of Cali rock vibe at times. So like songs like Say It and Need It to Work then kind of, become a bit harder and there's a there's a bit more bite to them um I, I i thought it was really interesting i think like you've got like the angry moments like skin a rat at the start that's kind of a real um kind of storming song and then uh like call me home is really really beautiful which it, that's kind of more of like heartbreak than like an angry place um mm. i just think it's really fascinating as an album like the final song is like a it's really kind of haunting this like orchestral performance of um, not a love song. Um, it, it feels very like kind of movie soundtrack, um, mm. and and other bits are really really catchy. Like sorry, entertainer is is a thrill, and make it right is is really really catchy, full of energy. Um, yeah, I, it's just not at all the album I would have ever expected, and I, I'm really really glad that that someone picked this for the podcast because I wouldn't have gone near this looking at that kind of snake cover thing with the yeah. knives and like her head on the <laughs> snake. It's like really weird. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I got so much out of this and um, I really, really enjoyed it. So. Well, wasn't yeah. really expecting that if I'm being honest. What about yeah. you, Matt? Yeah, I, I'm surprised. I'm, I like this, this album frustrated me a lot. Um, 
because I liked a lot of it, but to me, it didn't feel like it, it comes back to our discussion of what is an album. Um, and we've talked about that in the context of mixtapes and like the producer led albums. But I think this also could be up for discussion because it's just, it's purposefully obtuse in the way it's constructed and structured. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so like the way Sam's talking about like these different tracks, like it is that kind of that Skinner rap, which is to me, I, 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 I like your, um, the fact that you're talking about like the West coast of America, cause it does feel like a lot of those kind of bands. And so like for only tracks sounds like system over down to me. And then the next track is more like a Mitski song. <laughs> and then <laughs> the next track is like nine inch nails. <laughs> And, and then it's back to Mitski again. And I'm just, I, it's, it's so such an obvious, like purposeful thing. And I do, I feel like I like every single song and some of the songs I like genuinely, genuinely really love. Um, and I understand that the artist can have these two parts of them and they're presenting them at the same time, but to present them in such a, with such like jarring switches meant it wasn't really an enjoyable lesson for me. Um, mm. and I, th I think about other artists that have these diverging tastes and some merge them really successfully. Like we've talked about, uh, Rina Sa Sawayama and they yeah. mer mm. actually merge the genres, um, really well. Or you talk about, we've also talked about princess Nokia and they had, they split it by album. They had like an emo album then they had their R and B album. I think Tierra Wack did something uh, else similar recently. And I'm just, I'm so much more down for that than this because it's, it's just confusing to me. I can't, I can't decide what I'm doing. And I, it, it I, just... I, can, I can fully understand that. I feel like that's, that, that is the reaction I probably expected after that first listen to this is that we'd mm. all sort of agree on that. But yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I sort of just got into it. <laughs> Um, you got, you got, you're into new metal now. I was in it, like this is it. <laughs> Turning point. <laughs> Did so, yeah, you say so, you yeah. liked all the songs, Sam? Um, yeah, well, there wasn't any mm. moments I'm like, please get skip this, or this mm. felt like a bit too far. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, that's, that's it's not like the greatest point, album but... of all time. I'm not saying no. it's like, this is <laughs> amazing, but I, I enjoyed it way more than I would have done, I think. Yeah. Um, otherwise yeah uh but yeah I, i'm gonna run i'm gonna run a test after this i i meant to do it beforehand but i'm gonna i'm gonna do the the sam special and and uh split it into two albums to dis yeah, disassemble yeah. the album the playlist and yeah mm. make a couple playlists and see what it sounds like then because that might be see, the way I, I listen to it <laughs> i think you'd need about about six playlists though because I think it's it's not just mixing two genres. It's not just switching between two things. I mean, it's all over the place. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel like it starts with like a heavy rock song, then a power ballad, then it's new metal. I'm sorry, Sam, I know you said you like Call Me Home, but I just found that a painfully bland ballad. Um, and I think you've mentioned Rina Sariyama, Matt. I think Porter yeah. Robinson was the other person that sprung to mind. Like people who do... I didn't like either of those albums when we covered them, but they successfully melded the genres together, whereas this just kind of switches between um genres from song to song there's even like a try to understand sounds like a country song need it to work sounds like post-punk um and i think it never brings them successfully together but having said all that i did quite enjoy listening to it and i enjoy listening to it more than say the rena sawayama or the port robinson is i found it more interested than that um and i do like a few of the individual songs but like matt said I don't feel that they really belong together on an album. Um, I like Sorry Entertainer. I like Skinner Rat. I like Need It To Work. I just kind of wish she hadn't bothered with any of the ballads um, and kept up the aggression. As for me, that they were the better songs. And I think there's a lot of ballads on this playlist. There's a lot of albums that have got a lot of ballads on and, and she's just shown up by some of the other artists. But yeah, I had some fun with the album. I will check out whatever she does next, I think. But for me, I felt, felt like she just needed to settle on a sound. So it sounds like we've kind of got yeah. the, the breadth of responses to this album in a way. Yeah. I was supposed to say everything's, everything's a ballad. Because it feels like yeah, even the slower right. songs, they don't feel ballady. They just feel like there's a few a ballads. Like, indie rock song. Call Me Home is a ballad. Um, 
I can't remember the name of the other one. There's a couple of ballads, guess, at least. I guess you're just more generous with the word ballad. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't describe yeah. any of this as a ballad. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like soft rock kind of vibe, yeah. maybe. Soft rock ballad, not... you know. <laughs> it's a ballad. They're ballads. But anyway, sure. you know. It's not, um, it's not quite Cheryl Crow or anything like that. <laughs> no. I mean, ballad's a very loose term. Yeah. Um, I feel like it covers any music that's a bit slow. That's, that's what yeah. I use ballad for. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any more for any more on Sasami? No. Or should we give Matt his favourite question? So, Matt, <clears throat> yeah. which album made the best use of Calm? None. None? <laughs> I, I, don't feel like, I don't feel like any album on this list used Calm in any particularly well way. I think for okay. using Calm, you need mm. the, like the balance of contrast and consistency. And I don't think there's that many albums that actually use Calm. And the one mm-hmm. that does, which I will talk about, the weather station, yep. uh, with how is it that I should look at the stars, it is all calm. There's nothing mm-hmm. but calmness. And so I don't think yep. it uses it as a tool. It's just what it is. But okay. we're going to talk about it anyway. Okay. Because I don't <laughs> think any of the albums, other <laughs> albums, really struck me with the use of calm. Um, okay. And so play, play. this, this um, album, to me, it it kind of teases you throughout it. It feels like it it stays calm. It stays like within itself. And there's several moments in which it, it feels like it's threatening to build into something bigger and more interesting, but it, then it just takes a step back and it's, and it's, I found that experience incredibly irritating and annoying um, mm. because it like, it has so much, like I can tell it's like very beautiful and very like intimate but without the like dynamic range i'm not like drawn into it i think if i compare it to something that like we all loved which was anna p savage right that has the similar Mm -hmm. bare bones instrumentation the kind of distinctive voice but that had so much more other stuff going on (laughs) to add contrast to make those moments more impactful um, and so I just, yeah, I did like kind of, I tried listening to this one so many times and I just kind of, it felt like just one drony moment <laughs> that just <laughs> went on. And like, there were moments like the, the duet in the middle, um, yeah. with the woodwind, um, that one I actually quite liked because it had something else, um, attached to it. There was a something a little bit more diversity within the song um but yeah i i i haven't this is the first time i listened to the weather station i know everyone was obsessed with their last album um i think i maybe didn't listen to it like once mm. i think i maybe listened to it once um, and then there was just so much music that i just couldn't keep up um mm. so i don't know if that one's more interesting or if i'm just like shitting on something beloved but I, I would I would say you 100% need to listen to the two previous albums to this one. I would, okay. Yeah, def- definitely do that. Um, do not judge them just off this one. Okay. Well, yeah, that's the, me. So I'm just like... I'll, I'll, ju- I'll jump in. I may as well jump in. Um, yeah, so yeah, you've just, you've just alluded to the fact I'm, I'm a fan of the Weather Station anyway. Have been for a really long time. Um, last year's album, Ignorance, was the one that really gained them a lot of attention but i'd say like anyone who who only heard that album as their fir- the first thing they heard by them i'd say go back further the self-titled album is exceptional as well um i've loved every album she's done the one thing i say about this one is i do think it's possibly her her best vocal performance so far that's all i'm saying just the best vocal performance um i'm gonna use the word ballad again i think it being entirely ballads yeah. kind of allows her voice to shine and on the last album, actually, she got quite a bit of some critics sort of doubt with her vocal ability. And I think I think this album kind of puts that to bed. Um, it's a lovely collection of songs. I can't deny that. There, there are three songs in particular I love. I love the track Ignorance. Um, I, it's the one about the magpie. I think it's like a, it's got a really clever sort of um, conceit about, you know, the arrogance of humanity, feeling that they can like control nature. Um, I love the duet that Matt's just mentioned, which is called yeah. To Talk About. Um, and there's a track later on called Sway, um, which is the one where she talks about going up to the bed, uh, her partner coming up to the bedroom and playing music to her through headphones. And it just, 
that one really sort of spoke to me. Um, and I think the album, the instrumentation is lush, it's subtle, and there was, there's a lot of positives, but I am disappointed with this as an album. Um, I just think it really lacks her normal vitality. Um, the other albums have got so much more to them, Matt, what, what you say, you know, the, they are light and shade. There is more energetic songs. Um, for me, this has been sort of marketed as a companion piece to Ignorance, last year's album. Uh, she wrote all the songs at the same time. But for me, I just don't think it justifies space as its own album. Um, it kind of felt like, you know, when you get a bonus disc, when an, when, when an yeah. album's 10 years old, and they give you all the songs that they wrote at the same time. And, and if it was that, I'd have been like, wow, this is great. There's some really good songs here. I, I, what a lovely extra to the album. But as a standalone album, it just it just isn't that special. Um, it feels it's like a shame. Cheating. I would, yeah, I kind of would have liked her to, you know, maybe you've given it as a deluxe version or just moved forward and, and done something new because ignorance really took her to a next to next level in terms of fan base. And I think maybe what happened is, oh, ignorance has done this, so I should release the songs I wrote at the same time. But you should, have, you know, if you're going to put another album out so quickly, it should take you on and and this takes her back a little bit it's it's definitely the weakest collection of songs she's released even though i do still think it's good so yeah i was disappointed um and i would say please do listen to the other albums um don't because i think you'd like her actually i think you'd really like you might like the stuff before ignorance matt more than ignorance actually but um okay yeah okay that's kind of where i landed on this one what about you sam yeah so i feel like we're we're pretty much going to agree on this. Um, mm, I, yeah. I had listened to the last one and I did I did like it, um, the last album, quite a lot. But I, I intentionally like avoided going back to it once we were going to pick this, just so I could kind of listen to it as itself. But even then, I could I, you instantly know that this is so much more stripped down. It's so much more raw and kind of just there's just a lot less to it. Um, mm. And I found it really hard to to get into as a whole album because of that, because the songs just sort of blend into one. There's it, there's very few moments that feel like it, it kind of reaches a peak. Um, if it, I'm comparing it to some of the other albums on this short on on this playlist, it's kind of like they all have these like peak moments in them, or like these like mm. highs and lows, and this just feels very very one note one thing that that frustrated me was that um you said about like this is her best vocal performance i Mm. I feel like her vocals get kind of lost um and i don't know if it's the mix or like the way that the the songs are constructed in that Mm. i I feel like she's singing and i found it really difficult to be able to hear what Mm. she's saying beneath the piano and the if there was like saxophone or something, because that was so kind of beautiful and like high in the mix that sometimes I feel like her vocals are like a bit muffled or like I can't really understand what she's saying. Um, and I found like you all three of those songs that you picked out as ones you really liked, Fran, uh, especially yeah. Sway. Like I just feel like that's a great example of that where I really like her performance, but I just think it's getting a little lost. And I don't know if it's it's weird. It's like the starkness of it is actually taking away from her. It's not making her shine mm. more. It's like she's doing even less than she would be if she was having to overcome other sounds around her. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I, ju- I just found it really hard to get yeah, on board sense. with it. Yeah. Lyrically, I found it hard to actually unpick what was being said. And um, if the few times I listened to it and felt like I was able to properly give it in my time and kind of block everything else out it started to work but as as an album and in the time that we've listened to this the number of times when i get that it's very it Mm. isn't very often so i just feel like this i was i was slightly disappointed by this as well i feel like um it didn't it didn't kind of feel like it was something that was worth going back to um, yeah. Again and again, um, yeah. I I agree with you about the vocals. Actually, it does it like the vocals, like I um, don't seem you strong enough to, headphones. Ho- to hold everything together. I have the same headphones as you. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you bought them. You bought them when I told you to. Then, yeah, I did. Okay, um, okay. I'll shut up. But, yeah, it it. 
like for having something so stripped back like often that's counterweighted by having like a super like a powerhouse voice or something that yeah just, I, I pushes just it on and it's it uh, feels really low and equal to the music yeah I, I was comparing it i was thinking of something something like the the last laura marley album which which felt like a, mm. a big that was a stripping back of the sound from her previous view mm. but it still retained what was great about her voice and what was great about the way she writes songs. And it felt like the song was able to sustain itself, even though there's less going on. And it felt like here, these songs sort of just, there was nothing to them anymore. Like there Mm. wasn't anything drawing me back. So then I didn't bother to try and listen properly. If if that makes sense, it's kind of, there's nothing to hook onto. Um, yeah, I felt the same. It's like I kept every time I was coming back to it, I was like, I should be. This is the Weather Station. You know, I've, I love them. I've seen them live a few times, and I should really want to listen to it. And I, I didn't. And and it took me a while to think. You know, for a while I was like, oh, maybe it just needs to grow on me. And by the end of the month of listening to it, I was like, Do you know what? It's maybe just not that good. Um, again, I would play it as like a, some B sides, and I'd listen to it a few times, but I wouldn't keep going back to it as an album. And you wouldn't want to go and see a tour off the basis of this one. So, no. yeah, it feels like a wasted opportunity, really. But it is what it is, as they say. Okay, mm. should we move on? Yeah. 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 So, Matt, what's what's the worst album left? Oh, oh. Um, that one's a tough, because I actually... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say best, but I thought, I'm going to go worst, just because you've moaned about both the two so far, so I might as well carry on for you. Um... I'm going to go for the one I'm least likely to listen to again is probably the Death Cab album. Okay. Okay. So this is our classic. Yeah. Um, And so it was kind of fun to hear you suggest this because Death Cab reminds me of our old roommate. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It was one of the few albums they had that I feel like I I found acceptable that they played. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. It was, uh, they had the pre, I think the previous album, Trans Atlanticism, which has like a yeah. bird on the front. Um, okay. Um, but I, I, I remember this album coming out and like maybe listening to it a couple of times, but not really. Um, but uh, yeah, not really like digging into it super, super, super amount. So it was fun to come back to it and uh, kind of listen to the album as a whole because I, I remember some of the, the, the tracks um, mm. like. Um, soul meets body um and it feels the album as a whole and them feel very similar to other bands at the same time i feel like there was a lot of similar artists like um the shins and band of horses and decemberists all doing this kind of american indie rock old rock that was like kind of emo white boy (laughs) indie tone throughout (laughs) it um and they're all like sad and mopey um but (laughs) I, I generally, I liked listening to this album. Um, I remember a lot of those artists I list, they'd maybe only have one or two good songs and then the album mm. as a whole would be kind of dull. And there is a little bit of that to this. It can be drudgy at times. Um, and one thing to note is the US version is missing the last two tracks. And so oh, really? it's, it's yeah, it's like a good probably six to 10 minutes shorter for the, the version that I listened to. Um, and I feel like that could make a big difference, um, especially as when you get away from, I think, some of the more interesting songs like um, like Soul Meets Body or um, I Will Follow You Into the Dark, um, I also really mm. liked. When you get away from that, the song structure is very, very similar for a lot of the other songs. Um, and so it gets So Start Again and Bad Reputation you didn't have? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You don't know if you can see them. (laughs) They were grayed out. They were grayed out. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, Sorry, carry on. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I think that's like kind of sums it up for me. Like, I enjoyed coming back to this album. I there was a lot of tracks I did like. I like the general ambiance of the album. Um, It does feel a little better than maybe some of the contemporaries. But that said, I can see it getting like dragging. And it isn't mm. that musically diverse, I don't think. So it was like it was it was good. 
Okay. Was that yeah. your final word? I like that. It was good. Oh. Yeah, it was good. Sam, where'd um, you land, Sam? I'll, I'll jump in. I, I can't believe that that feels like the biggest understatement ever, that this isn't <laughs> musically diverse. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're one of those bands that, like, I've heard the name, obviously, for years and years. I was not into oh, this yeah. sort of music at the time. And you'd see them on, like, indie compilations and things like that. But I don't think they were ever huge over here. Um, from what I could see, I couldn't really see, like, them being... Maybe they were, like, appeared at festivals and stuff. But mm. they, they, I don't think they had many huge, like, well-known songs over here. So maybe that's why I have I just have no reference point for them. Um, but my God, they could be anyone. This album is so <laughs> just lifeless and faceless and has no personality at all. I, and to me, it's entirely him. His voice is so mm. boring and he sounds <laughs> so bored. Uh. And it's not in like a, I'm too cool for this kind of the like British indie way of like that that era of like I'm so above this I'm like so cool it it sounds like he's like <laughs> my like rich parents have paid for me to be in a band and I just want to do it so they don't start complaining about me about getting like a real job and it, I don't I have no idea about these people that's probably really bad and he's probably really <laughs> talented and all this but I just can't I can't see why people could be like yeah this is great oh I remember all these songs like this is I have no strong feelings. There was nothing that engaged me at all. You said it might be better with two more songs. Like what? Every single one sounded exactly the same. There was, there was no. I, inter- I said it might be worse. It might. There was be worse. no interesting <laughs> lyrics. There was nothing that I just felt like so by the numbers. Um, that in this playlist, it just completely fell apart for me. This was this is by far the worst thing on this playlist. Wow. Mm. I um, thought you'd like this, you know. It's just, just so... Like there's just nothing to it. Like, I don't... It's very it, mopey. Yeah, but, like, not even in an interesting way. It's like... <laughs> I, I just don't care. And it sounds like they don't care. So then I that makes me care even less. I Yeah, it just was not... was not for me. Mm, interesting. Um, well, I picked this because... Um, the song "I Will Follow You in the Dark" into the dark. Um, I saw it in a film recently, and I remember just being obsessed with that song for a while um, when I was when it first came out, probably. So I, I only really knew that song. Um, I still think that song is. Um, um, you say there's no standout moments for me. That's the the best song on this playlist, mm, yeah. apart from the Angel Olsen stuff. Um, "I Will Follow You into the Dark" is, is a fantastic song. It's, it's. I think it's a really poignant ballad. I think it really. Sh- I said ballad again. Why do I keep saying ballad? Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> It really shows this band at their best, I think. Um, but yeah, despite having been a fan of that song, um, I never really looked into them in any more detail because I did think they would disappoint me. Um, I did think that that song would be very much the high point. And I think part of that is because they've got a terrible band name and I didn't want to listen to them because why would you call yourself Def Cab for Cutie? Um, but then almost in spite of myself, I quite like this album. Like, I don't feel like I should. It is very nicey, nicey. Um, it's one of the most American sounding albums ever heard, ever heard. And like when when I think about some of the British acts that we sometimes cover, and I always, always wonder how they translate over there. Um, I wonder how these translate over here. And, and by by what Sam said, not very well. Um, and he's probably right that they're not as big over here as they are in America. But in a way, it was it was probably the album I went back to most often this month. Um, you know, I think they have really good melodies. I do think they build a song well. Um, I think they, a lot of the songs, they gradually layer more elements and, and build towards a crescendo. Um, I find it quite uplifting at times. I think there are several songs that did stand out. I've already mentioned um, I Will Follow You Into the Dark. I think some, Someday You Will Be Loved Good. I really like Brothers on a Hotel Bed. Um, but there are a couple of stinkers. Matt, you're quite lucky that um, you didn't have Bad Reputation to finish the album because that's a terrible song. Um <laughs> It's really bad, but, and that is, you know, that does sound very generic of this kind of music, that last song, but, but overall, yeah, I, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I would say I agree with Sam that his voice isn't great. Um, it's his voice is a bit of an issue for me. I think if it, his voice had a bit more grit to it, then I would probably like this album enough to, to keep going back to it, but his yeah. voice is a bit too 
whiny and a bit too weak for me. So that puts me off. I probably won't listen to it again, even though it might have been the album I listened to most this month. So yeah, kind of in the middle, but definitely not as bad as some things. And I thought Sam would like it. So nope. there we go. What do I know about Sam's tastes? I suppose that tells us. <laughs> okay, so two albums left. Sam, which is better? Melt Yourself Down or Shamir? Um, I actually really like both of these. So I'm going to I'm gonna say Shamir because I actually think it's probably the album I enjoyed going back to the most of everything. Um, I don't know okay. if it, I don't know if the Sesame album is better, but um, I think this one is like the most immediately engaging and interesting, and I was ex- genuinely excited to talk about it on the podcast. Um, it's it's another one that's so constantly changing in style and tone, um, but it feels um, a little bit more together um, because kind of the thematically. Um, the songs kind of feel like they're within the same world as each other. I think the opening three tracks of this album are the highlight of the whole playlist. I think um, Gay Agenda, Cisgender and Abomination. I think there's, all three of them are so thrilling and so dynamic. There's so much anguish and internal struggle, and but there's so much defiance in them. Um, they feel like they're really making a statement, all three of these songs. Um, and there's a lot to unpack. The, lyrically, this album has so many moments that I could pick out. And like, um, there's a bit in Abomination where it's, I'll keep my foot on your neck and don't you forget, you can't trust the government to change shit. Um, and I I just found lyrically, this album was so interesting. Um, I think, um, I, I can't remember hearing a song that talks so bluntly and and effectively about um, kind of gender norms and being not not conforming to that um, as cisgender does. I, I think there's a whole bit where it's like, I'm not going to pass for you. You've got to get past. And mm. I, I found that statement really, really affecting actually um, because it feels like we're at a time when this there's a kind of cultural thing, especially here in the UK right now, where it feels like mm. um, trans people are being dumped on constantly. And it feels like yeah. I, I feel very helpless about it and that there's there's people who are just trying to live their lives. And it feels mm. like the, there's a lyric on that song, like, I'm just existing on this godforsaken land. You can take it or leave it or you can just stay back. Um, and... The, there's a bit at the end where the vocal goes like really, really high um, as that said. And it's like, I found it really, really emotional, even though it's quite a jarring and um, um, like off-putting sound at first. Um, I think Shamir's voice is, is very, is going to be very Marmite. I don't, I don't think this is something I would recommend to a lot of, a lot of mm. people. I think that will be a, a breaking point for some people. Um but I think, um, yeah, I, I think overall, as the album goes on, it, it kind of settles into kind of a, a more, not a safer sound, but um, there's there's a lot more kind of accessibility in some of those songs. I think Marriage is very like pop, like bop kind of vibe. Mm. Um, and it, I found it so interesting that the album starts so kind of seriously or like kind of emotionally. Um, and then as it goes on, you still get that within the lyrics, but the overall tone of the album kind of mellows out and uh, there's a lot more of like a grooviness and um, the kind of uh, stark electronic sounds kind of make way for some some other things. Um, I, I just thought it, this was a really, really interesting album. I, I really enjoyed going back to it. Um, it, it goes places there'll be things that people don't like on it and things that people won't want to go back to, but I I can't think of anything else that will kind of be better to discuss than this album was this time. Um, Mm. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. 
I'll jump in. Yeah, I think I had yeah, a tough time coming to a conclusion on this one. Like, um, I did change my mind about it se- several times because I really agree with a lot of what Sam's just said about the messaging of the album and the lyrics of the album and the sort of um, the weight behind some of the songs. And I think sort of the, for, for a lot of albums that talk about, you know, being LGBTQ plus and just, and, and there's a lot of, you, you don't always get the sort of intensity of this album and the real yeah. sort of honesty about how hard things are. And I think that is so powerful at times. Um, and his, I, I think Shamir's voice is exceptional. Um, like incredible. At times it reminded me of Anon, Anon here at times. And I think yeah. Sam's just mentioned two of, of the best songs in um, the, the opening two, Cisgender and um, Gay Agenda. Um so yeah, I mean, I think the main word I have for this album is powerful. It is really, really powerful. Um, but I think early on listening to it, it felt like those poppy songs that you've mentioned, it felt like quite an upbeat album. Um, yeah. But the more you listen to it, it's really dark and it's yeah. really upsetting. Um, and he's talking about self-harm and, and, you know, and that's fine. And it's good that someone's been this open and honest about it. I think it's really commendable. Um, but it's also a really hard listen. And the reality for me is that some of the songs I didn't like, and, and and sonically, like the sound of the song rather than the message, I found them quite annoying. And because I found them quite annoying and it was quite a tough listen at times, I actually came away from it not really sure where I landed because like, I kind of really admire the album, but I don't think I want to listen to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think songs like Cisgender and Reproductive, they're both fantastic, but then you mentioned Abomination, what a great message in that song. But a bit like what I said when we talked about Lizzo, the sound of that song was too much for me. Like, it, it, I struggled with it. And then something like Cold Brew, I found a bit too cheesy. So it's a kind of really weird mixed feeling that I came away from. Like, I really, I'm interested in Shamir now. I think really interesting person, really interesting songwriter. But the album itself was a little bit too much for me, I think. So I probably yeah. won't spend much more time with it. Um, but yeah, but I want to like it. But I don't like it that much. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But we did one. What about you, Matt? Um, so I, I I picked this one because it's uh, actually one of my wife's favorite artists. Okay, and I've heard I've heard a bunch of songs, um, and then typically in like this playful R and B, hip hop, poppy space. Yeah. Um, and I thought I thought that would be like a nice easy pick, and then <laughs> the, <laughs> I listened to this, and it's like. <laughs> It comes with this like super synth heavy grungy sound. It sounds almost like Gary Newman or something to the, 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 the opening kind of tracks. And it's so dark and broody. I was just like, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> um, but I, I, I super dug it. I, I think this kind of anger and like fuck you attitude that's in it um, is really emphasized by the um, backdrop, the musical backdrop that they provide. It's, it's much um much m- more different than um say if it was <laughs> dressed with a nice like poppy number behind it mm. um i think yeah like sam's talked talked about the messaging i think it is uh, i think the big word that sam uses it's so blunt it's so to mm, the point yeah. it's it's yeah. ev- maybe the most straightforward takedown of like hetero and cis normative attitudes that i've listened to um and it the way it also yeah details how hard it is to live in and out of the boxes provided by society and doesn't just put like a brave face on it it's not just like a celebration it's like this is Mm. the reality is so um yeah it's so powerful so i i I, I really loved it um the opening i i'd go as far as saying the opening five tracks are all superb um yeah um and then it does take a shift and becomes a little bit more easygoing like sam mentioned le- less grimy um but they're still like it's still very very fun um it becomes much more like 90s indie rock for me um like nuclear that i think which is the final song sound sounded almost yeah. like pulp um mm. so I, I was just like what is going <laughs> what is going on throughout this but i like like sam said it works it it mixes it doesn't take any step too far at any one point um it doesn't lose you along the way it challenges you but um 
it's still you could listen to it superficially and still have like a very like oh this is fun or you could dig into it and like oh this is like really engaging and interesting and and the music's still great um so i i yeah i it was a surprise but i enjoyed it a lot yeah, well apparently i know you mentioned it's um your wife's one of your wife's favorite artists apparently it's their eighth album i've never yeah, heard, they're... heard of them and then i think they only came on the scene like <laughs> less than a decade ago okay so <laughs> it's like relentless releasing yeah yeah it's pretty they're pretty yeah. pro- prolific i just want to add because you two both mentioned how you found it sort of um defiant and um interestingly at times i think what i found hard was it felt very honest in the fact that sometimes you feel like giving up and i think that's kind of what i found quite hard and i suppose defiant hadn't really thought obviously it's defiant at times but also you know it's it's a hard thing to listen to i think sometimes when someone's just saying at times i can't go on with it and i think that's what was a struggle sometimes but it's it's that like, it's that bluntness of of yeah. the honesty. Like we talk yeah. about albums being, it's really honest. It's really personal albums. Sort of, and mm. and when we say that, we really mean that like, oh, they've drawn from something that happened in their real life, not putting all of their feelings out on there, which yeah. is what happens yeah. on this album. So it is a hard listen at at times. Um, but I feel like we've listened to a few other albums that have been like that, and this was mm. one that. I felt like musically and and also lyrically, it it gave gave you enough that you could you could also actively enjoy oh, yeah. listening to it. It, yeah, was, yeah, it didn't yeah, feel like yeah, work yeah. having to get through it, um, yeah. even though it has. You're just that making me think impact. of the Mount Erie album that that was <laughs> Mount Erie album, about his, which is unlistenable because it's not it doesn't give you that side of it whereas this album i'm definitely definitely does give you enough to listen to and also you can listen to yeah. this album without really noticing the lyrics i think and yeah, noticing yeah. how heavy it is i think it's only when you spend as much time with it as we do for the podcast that you you might get to see how heavy it is at times but it is a very listenable album as well like some of the songs are great cool are cool. we done with shamir did you want to say anything else Matt? okay I'll, I'll start as i melt yourself good. down because i haven't started anything yet um so melt yourself down, pray for me, I don't fit in. Um, so yeah, the the pray for me, I don't fit in is the name of the album. And that's actually the opening song as well. And if I think, I think if every song on the album was as good as that opening song, this would probably be making my top twenty of the year. I, I love that song. It's it's raucous, it's chaotic, it's fun. I think it does a really good job of mixing the jazzy elements with something a bit more sort of indie rock sounding. It's it's kind of melding genres very effectively in a way that say I didn't think the Sasami did but then I think there's a huge drop between that first song and the second song like Boots of Leather is just really sluggish boring and slow I didn't like it like it at all and for me that kind of painted the picture for this whole album it's a real mixed bag I think it kind of has some real real highs some really fun songs and then other songs that just do nothing for me at all um so I guess the real shame for me is that the good stuff makes me think that this immensely talented, interesting band who are doing something a bit different, but then they're just not consistent for me. Um, for realism, doesn't do a lot for me, but then it's followed by uh, Night Siren, which is just fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not always a big jazz fan, um, but for me, it was the jazz side of things um, here that that was better, um, like the jazzier songs, the the more sort of use of different instrumentation which was more successful uh, but for me it's just not there's not enough of it um to keep me bringing me back to the album although i'll give the next one a listen and like i'd love to see them live because some of the songs are fantastic but yeah it was another album on this playlist that was a total mixed bag for me so yeah who wants to go next i i'll yeah. jump in go for it um yeah this uh, again, I, f- I found like most of these albums just a bit baffling, like at times, um, <laughs> because they're just so. It, we, we seem to have picked loads of like genre blending, yeah. kind of what is it? At times, this is like really grungy 90s indie, um, but in the background to like real jazz grooves. And it was like, um, I just fa- I found this really infectious, this album. And I think from the start, it does it does set the tone really well with that opening track. It is the best track on the mm-hmm. album. Um, and it's the one that every time I would come back to it, I'd be like, oh, I'm, I really, really love this. 
And I agree that by the end, you kind of go, oh, actually, the rest of it isn't as good as that was. But I, mm. I do think I got more out of it than you you maybe did. Yeah. Um, they feel like the sort of band where, you know, like they like a band that appears on like Jules Holland and like all of the musicians from like other people's bands like are obsessed with them. And like everyone else mm. is looking at them really confused. Like, why is this guy <laughs> singing this indie song and they're all playing jazz? Um, it, they kind of felt like that. So I, d- I don't know how it would translate to like the general public or like other people that I'd know. Um, mm. I know that when I would play this in like the car and stuff with, with my partner, David, he'd be a bit like, what the hell is this? Like, what? <laughs> And like the other albums had like craziness in them, but this was like, uh, what is what is going on? I'm just like stressed out, and <laughs> and there's like someone singing. Like what was? But I I really enjoyed the energy of this. Um, I felt like it goes throughout. I I think Sunset Flip is another one that I really liked. Um, and I actually I think I liked For Real. Um, I picked mm. that one out as one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, it's. Whether it comes together, I don't think this does come together um, as much. Um, by the end, I think you kind of get to the end of the list and go, oh, yeah, there's there's less tracks here than I remember enjoying as much as I did. Um, but it makes a hell of an impact at first when you first put it on. Um, mm. Yeah. So that's where cool. I am. Yeah, I thought I was going to love it after hearing that first song. I was like, oh, yeah. this is going to be great. But yeah. What are you, man? Uh, I, 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 I um I like this album a lot. Um, it's uh, so I I actually I've seen them live like over a okay. decade ago, um, just oh, wow. randomly with a friend, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, at the time, uh, what's his name, uh, Shabaker Sh- Hutchings was in the project mm. as well. Okay, and, um, he's since left along with someone else. They they went and made Sons of Kemet. Um, but yeah. the, the saxophonist left is the guy from Nadine Shah's band. Um, yeah, they supported Nadine Shah. Um, so, yeah, that doesn't... Oh. So, you've, have you seen them live then? No, that wasn't oh, no. the tour when I saw her, no, no. no. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I knew she... So, that's why I was kind of looking forward to checking it out. But um, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it does feel like, for me, it, like like you said, it feels like a collection of songs that would be taken up a level being played live. It's such a, like, mm. raucous party energy to to everything um because i think it is like jazzy the sax is front and center but that's um it's not as big a deal as say some of the like contemporaries like like sons of kemet and stuff like that it's there's a much more like punk vibe to it which i um really really enjoy um and i think that would translate better to a, like a live setting because it does and the album, like you, like you guys have mentioned, it is a bit like up and down. Um, some of the tracks are just don't hit as well, I don't think. Um, but I think it has such a unique sound, like and a unique energy to the album as a whole. It, regardless of kind of how I was feeling, it would always have an impact on me. Yeah. Um, the like. Uh, I think Fran, you mentioned Night Siren. I love that song. Mm. It's so yeah, hypnotic, song. and then the chorus comes in so heavy, um, and then I think that goes into All We Have, which then like is a nice like gas take the foot off the gas mid album break for something that's much more meaningful, and it reminds me a bit of TV on the radio, and that kind of um, feel to it. Um, but I, yeah, I've listened to some of their albums um, in the past, and like their debut was really interesting. But I feel like where they fall down is they've got too. It's too much like the Sasami album, where it switches from genre to genre too drastically. There's too many ideas and not enough polish. And I feel like this is a more of a step in the right direction. But if they just rain, the, if they rain the chaos in just a little bit more, they could have something really, really like special and interesting um but it's not quite there yet but live i think it would still be something mm. yeah, uh, really yeah. really quite something yeah you go and see him if they're at a festival wouldn't you that'd be a good good oh, festival band sure. i think yeah. yeah cool yeah that's us i think cool. 
That is yeah. the five albums. So let's talk about the playlist. What did you think, Sam? Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I think other than the Death Cab album, I think all of it I'm glad <laughs> I listened to. I'm so surprised um, that's your least favourite. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed the Sasami and the Shamir albums. Um, and I did enjoy um, Melt Yourself Down, going back to that quite a bit. Um, but I, I do wonder if we'll go back to it. Um, yeah. It's, it's the sort of thing that I'd probably only go back to it if it was like up for an award or something like that and um, kind of want to revisit it um, or see them live. I, th- I do I do think, um, I, I think all four artists, I feel like I'd like to see them live, even if the um, the albums, like I didn't enjoy them as much as the other ones. Um, I yeah. think I think there's some interesting people that we've gone through that maybe have better music elsewhere. Um yeah, I'd be really curious to see who's in the crowd at Sasami. Yeah, I think I think she is like you said, Mitski. I think she's supporting Mitski. I think they're in the same oh, really? kind of bracket of like artists. So that that's a good comparison, I think. Yeah. And um, so I don't know who would be in that crowd because that would be an interesting <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Weird. Weird. Yeah. What was your favorite song from the list? I think probably the Sasami. Um, but yeah. Wow. Matt, what about you? Um, I think this list is solid, probably average. Um, mm. There was nothing I hated, at least musically. Um, there was parts I found annoying or forgettable, but nothing was too egregious. And there was lots like I liked. I don't think there was anything where I was like, the closest to something that I, I really, really love is Shamir. Um, Okay, and so I'll, I'll probably keep listening to that album, but the rest, I'm like, yeah, I like them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just the most sort of mixed bag of a playlist for me that we've done in a long time. Like every album, I had bits that I liked and bits that I I didn't like. There wasn't one album that was consistently good for me or consistently bad. So, a bit of a weird one. Um, I don't really know what my favorite was. It's weirdly, it's probably either Def Cab or Weather Station, <sighs> even though. Gross. I didn't just because <laughs> Weather Station. I'm always going to love them, but it wasn't a good Weather Station album, so it wasn't really a good list for me. Yeah, they were the worst albums yeah. on the list. If they were my yeah. favourites, it wasn't really a good list for me. Um, I think the other albums just had more stuff that annoyed me on them. All three of them had stuff that really annoyed me, <laughs> um, and stuff that I liked. But so Weather they, Station, they win out by being boring. Yeah, yeah, it's default. Yeah. It's default. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about something that's consistently fantastic um, mm. in the form of Angel Olsen. Um, so, yeah, before I talk about in depth about Angel Olsen and why I love her and her music, I just I want to talk about the experience of putting this playlist together. Because um, for me, it was the first time in the whole time that we've been doing this podcast that as I was putting the why I love playlist together, I realized I was an even bigger fan of the artist than I already thought I was. Like, I obviously knew I loved Angel. I was I was picking her to cover for the sec- section, but spending that time whittling down her albums and EPs into a fifteen song playlist sort of showed me how consistently exceptional she is. Um, it was really hard to decide on the songs because as I was, you know, I always start a playlist by just putting all the albums on, having to listen to them all, and there's just no duds in her career. I mean, she released a, a cover, a covers EP last year that was pants, really bad eighties covers. But she was just having fun. That For me, they're the only duds that she's released in her career. Like everything I listened to while I was putting this together was great. Um, so in the end, it came down to me, rather than just me picking my very favorite songs like I usually do, I was trying to create a playlist that sort of demonstrates one of the things that I really love about her. And that's the way she just is always evolving. She's sort of always moving forward, always making small ch- changes to her sound. Um, because... That's one of the things that's important to me about her as an artist um, and is important about her as an artist to to anyone, I think. Um, I did end up putting the list in chronological order. I'm sorry, Sam. I know you're trying to like revolutionize us away from <laughs> chronological <laughs> order. I'm not trying to make you do um, anything. But, you know, I felt like I did try, but I think for Angel Olsen, it makes a lot of sense because it's part of her career is like the change between each album. Um, so as well as doing that, I tried to sort of, um, transition between albums by showing two songs that showed that contrast. So I kind of went from the country folk ballad of 
Lonely Universe to the sort of rockier forgive it, Forgiven Forgotten. Um, and then from the sort of indie rock of Unfuck, Unfuck the World to sort of the quite poppy Shut Up and Kiss Me. And then like the poppier Give It Up, I went to the dramatic orchestral sort of all mirrors. So it kind of, for me, what I was trying to do is show, even though I'm not saying she's not like a, she's not someone like Sasami or Shamir that changed 17 times on an album, but she has these steady increasing evolutions, um, but always manages to keep her identity at the center of her music. And I love artists who can do that, who can, who can keep growing, but always give the fans what they want. And I think she's the absolute master of that. Um, so I think like, yeah, every album of hers sounds very different on an individual basis, but they are still her. And for me, what's always happened throughout my, the time I've known Angel Olsen is I'd, I've listened to an album. I love it. And then I listen to the next one. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure she should have done this. And then gradually it'll just knock me off my feet as it grows on me. So yeah, that's, that's one thing, one major thing I love about Angel Olsen is that she, she always keeps you guessing, but she never disappoints. Um, yeah, but one of the things, interesting things for me about doing this in chronological order is that I didn't actually discover her until bang in the middle of this playlist. Um, the first, I don't mean this literal playlist, I mean the timeline. Obviously, I didn't first hear her while I was putting this playlist together. But the, the first song I heard by her was, was Shut Up and Kiss Me. Um, and I was immediately taken by that song. Um, I went and bought the album My Woman. Um, and... You know, as well, as well as the indie pop songs on it, like like Give It Up and, and like um, Intern, it had really hauntingly beautiful ballads like Sister. I've included all of those songs here. There's also a, a song on that album called um, Heart Shaped Face, which I had to take off in the end because I, I was I was going over time. But yeah, it just showed me that she's a really sort of dynamic artist and, and a varied artist. Um and yeah, but it was quite a while until I went back to the previous albums, um, Burn Your Fire for No Witness and, and Halfway Home and, and the, the EP that's name has just left my mind. Cosmic Dream, I want to say, but it's just left my mind. Um, and then I just discovered this absolute treasure trove of like indie folk slash country songs. Like it was, I was already loving the album My Woman. And then I went back and discovered that all of the previous stuff was like one of my most go-to genres and, and an exceptional example of it. So I kind of became very obsessed with her at that point. Um, I also, I've seen her live a few times, uh, particularly during the My Woman period. Um, and that just cemented her as an artist I love because she's she's one of the most interesting people I've, I've seen on stage. Like the first time we saw her um, was in a in Club Academy. Uh, I don't know if you both, Matt, we've been in Club Academy, the small yeah. venue the at the bottom of Manchester Academy. Yeah, the tiny venue. I don't know if you've been to a gig there, Sam, but it's... Yeah, it's very, very, you have, yeah, it's tiny, yeah. it's tiny. And, um, and she just released my woman and was doing pretty well. And there was this, she was, she just looked so miserable for the first sort of 20 minutes of the <laughs> set, but was still just playing exceptionally well. And everything was fantastic, but she looked so pissed off. And then there was, um, some people just chatting through the songs and she just stopped halfway through a song and just basically, not very politely and very brutally told them to shut the fuck up or get out. I can't remember the exact words, but that basically what basically was what she said to them. And everyone, everyone in the room was cheering because it, you know it's a small room. We could all hear them talking, and um and and then she just went into a really really fantastically good mood after having done that. Um and just that I think that was the moment when I really fell for her because I was just like yes. That's my person. That's what I want to do at every gig I'm ever at when some twat's chatting in front of me and she just did it for all of us. So, um, But yeah, in general, her performances are just, there's, there's something, I don't really use the word cool a lot, but there's something really cool about her and about the way she performs. She just seems sort of so confident in her ability as a musician. And like, why not? Because she's like, she's an amazing singer. She's a great guitarist. Um, but like that confidence makes her a real, a real joy to watch. And I think this, it, she's just a very special artist, I think. Um, and I think one of the most exciting things is we're still likely to have years and years of her music to come. Um, we've, we've all seen she's announced an, an album this week, which is weird, just as we're talking about it. Um, and the single, I don't, you guys know, I don't normally listen to singles because I like to wait for the album. But I thought as I'm about yeah. to talk, as I'm about to talk about her, I'll listen to the single. You broke the rule. It's, I know, I know, I know, it's not good. Um, 
but it's it's an exceptional song. It's it's another slight change from the last album. I mean, it's quite a big change from All Mirrors. Actually, it's it's much less dramatic. She's gone back to lean in heavily on storytelling, which some of the early songs I included on this playlist, storytelling is sort of the the key part of them. And she's moved away from that over the years. But that this is much of a you know a storytelling song again. Um, what's interesting as well is that she she came out as gay, I think, last year or the year before. And this album was written during that period where she was coming out to her family. Um, so I'm hopeful we're going to get something, you know, I know Sam's just talked about how we talk about personal albums, but I'm hoping we're going to get something personal and emotional, you know, not definitely necessarily that it sounds like a really career stuff, but that kind of mood again. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's just, I think, a really interesting, dynamic, soulful artist who's got a lot to say and, and just writes great songs in different genres like her pop songs are great her folky songs are great i could talk for hours more but i won't i'm going to leave it there um but before you let me know what you thought of angel Olsen and what you thought of the playlist i'm interested in how well you both knew her before because i haven't really got a clue if um either of you know her or if you know her and hate her or know her and like her so um who, who wants to go first i don't mind uh, i can go um, yeah, go Matt. So I actually had a, I know Angel Olsen. <laughs> Surprise. You know Angel Olsen. Yep. I know Angel I know Olsen. you kn- personally. Well, no, I, don't, I don't know her personally. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I She's your best mate because you, you should have told me artist. that. Yeah. Uh, How well did you know the albums and did you know, have you listened to I, a lot? So it was really interesting to hear you talk about when you started with Angel Olsen because exactly <laughs> the same. Um, I mm. Shut Up and Kiss Me. Um, yeah it is the same song that kind of drew me in first song i okay. had really heard by them i played my woman um a lot it's actually one okay. of the first like it was a uh, one of the the artists that when i met my wife we talked about a lot like them oh, and okay cool, cool also sharon von etten because i think it's weird because it's the same with me and um same with me and kirsten is yeah. angel olsen was one of the big sort of ones that we bonded over early on that's weird isn't it there you go. yeah I, I think it like came out came out like when did it, like came out when we started dating i think so mm. like it makes sense um yeah but i i yeah i really 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 liked it but the, th- the thing that's different is i never i never d- d- dug back i've i've okay. stayed like up to date and current and listen yeah. to their newest stuff um and by the sounds of it it would be less appealing to me <laughs> right yeah and like listening to the playlist um, and the songs you put on, it is those the tracks that I'm drawn to are the poppier, rockier songs. It, yeah, it's yeah. my, it's I'm very predictable, and so the yes, I can't say I'm tracks, surprised. <laughs> the earlier tracks, I'm like I like them. She is, um, like you say, like you said, she's a very distinctive artist, and she is very mm. great at what she does. But they aren't the ones that I would choose to put on. And mm-hmm. so the whole, the, yeah, like listening to the songs again from My Woman was a delight. I also love the, like, the synthy direction she's gone in with this, like, more atmospheric sound. Mm. Um, so, like, I, I, you can kind of hear it in, in turn on My Woman, but then in yeah. All Mirrors. Um, that was really... something I was going to say that I didn't, is, like, I tried to include songs that should, because I think there's always, like, a song on one album that sort of prefaces what's going to come next. Yeah. And, like in turn is that for the next album and like um forgiven forgotten was the one that sort of prefaced what was going to come after that and i think she's always done that a little bit but yeah yeah carry on um but yeah it's and i think her voice is really interesting because it is so it's like very sharp almost it's almost Mm. i guess like crystalline in it in that it doesn't it feels just very very cutting almost um Mm. But like not in a not in a bad way. It just pe- like penetrates you. A bit um, like her comment at Club Academy, really. Very cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so it, it means she like stays with you. Um, mm. uh, but yeah, like I I am excited for their new stuff. And I, I was it was really nice to hear like some context for where they've come from, essentially. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it makes me even more excited for like what what they're going to do next because they do seem to just keep changing and mixing it up Mm. um so and i haven't heard the new single yet i didn't i um 
didn't realize. I don't know if you put it in our WhatsApp. I just <laughs> barely pay attention. Look, Sam actually put it in the WhatsApp and let me know about it. So Sam, Sam was on the pulse Absolutely. before me about Angel Olsen. You know me. So, yeah. Always on yeah. the pulse. Yeah. Um, I feel like normally you post something to say, Fran, look at this. It's, you'll really like this. And then I'm like, I already knew that one. But you, you beat me to it with Angel Olsen. So. Wow. Thank you. For that. One time. Yeah. Um, All right, Sam. Yeah. So I, I didn't know. I didn't know Angel, Angel Olsen at all, really. I, I think okay. I had listened to All Mirrors when yep. you were banging on about it for ages. And I was like, <laughs> I should give it a go. But I think yeah. I listened to it like once. So it was in my library. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so I just went in with like no expectations. I was like, okay. open expectations, not sure what it's going to sound like. And then the first like few tracks, I was like, this is not at all what I remember. Maybe I've mm. f- forgotten who this is. Yeah. Um, and... It it was very like those early the early stuff is very like analog recording. It fit, the vocal mm. performance feels um, it doesn't sound modern at all. It sounds like a classic mm. album. Like in this playlist, that yeah. bit of the section felt more of the classic album than the actual classic album did. Mm. Like, it reminded yeah. me of that Karen Dalton album in that sense of this kind mm. of like. Like, if this could have been someone recording this like y- decades ago, um, yeah, at yeah. times in those songs, I did find her vocals slightly off-putting. Um, and mm-hmm. I don't know if it was just because the instrumentation is so kind of stark. But then you reach Shut Up, Kiss Me. And for me, as someone who didn't have any reference point, that feels like a huge step up and a huge mm-hmm. moment where things dramatically change. It felt like, to me, it felt like a completely different artist. It felt like mm. she has like found confidence and found this kind of like energy and direction. I don't know if by what you say, that album is like the one that was like the first real kind of success. That Not really, really, no. But in the fire for no witness before it was massive, and there's a lot of people who are actually really not happy about the. Trans, you know, they're not happy that she changed in the way that she did. They want the old folk singer back. So yeah. there is there's like a mix, there's a mixed view on that. And there's people actually fans argue about it quite a bit about it. So I I don't I I think both sides are great. But um, yeah, I, but yeah I, there are people who wish she hadn't changed. I wasn't sure it felt like like when someone goes from like being an independent artist to like releasing mm. on a major label, like mm. the the difference in the sound. Yeah. I don't know if it was just the production or um yeah. But there was I, definitely what, more, a lot more budget for that. Album, what yeah. what yeah. you were saying as and the reason for why it works doing this in chronological is is exactly that. I do feel like there was been massive growth throughout mm. it, and and everything since that. I feel like those were the songs that I really really enjoyed and I really wanted to go back to. So I feel like those the, those albums are the ones that I feel I'll go and listen to properly now, mm. um, and I'll definitely listen to the new album when it comes out. I'm sure you'll be banging on about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> obviously. I already have. I already um, It's not even out yet. So, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it's not really my usual thing. Um, I really, really enjoyed the last track with Sharon Van Etten. Um, I, yeah. The, yeah. I, I really enjoyed That felt like kind of classic American rock. Like, kind of like they should be doing that in like, like a stadium with like kind of like I don't know like I don't know why it just had such American things in my head of like kind of like a flag and like <laughs> yeah like fireworks like Fourth of <laughs> July like I don't know it just gave me this. Well, they're doing like, a tour together in America this year called the Wild Hearts tour, so that is very um, yeah <laughs> very but yeah. What you're I saying, isn't really it? Really enjoyed that song, and I I really enjoyed Intern and All Mirrors as well. Um, mm. so I feel like. I should probably go back to All Mirrors after that yeah. one listen that I did just to get you off my back. Um, yeah. I'd say I mean, you listen to My Woman as well. I mean, My Woman is, yeah. you can tell, I, I put more songs than any other of that on the list. That is my favourite album by her. But um, but yeah, so from what you're saying, it's I think you'd really like what My Woman, because I could have put every track off that album on there, really. It's really yeah. hard to yeah. sort of strip it down. And there's a couple that I even regret choosing others over, but it, it, I think you'll really like that album from what you're saying. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you got something out of it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it was great. Brilliant. Okay. That's Angel Olsen then. Um, so I think that's us. I think we'll move on to, well, let's first of all say um, follow us at Picky Bastards on Twitter. Um, yeah. 
go and see the website at pickybees.com where we write lots of music write lots of music we don't write music <laughs> we write about lots of music oh, God. <laughs> none of us can write music um uh, no and there's there's something where you can give us money but i've forgotten what it is you can buy us a cup of coffee there's a link it's on our on twitter. twitter it's on our twitter link yeah, a yeah if you want to buy us a cup of coffee if you listen to us a lot you, you don't hate us you want to pay for some coffee for for james who doesn't even come on the podcast um buy buy james a coffee he's upset that no one's given him any money yet so so do it right just talk about it next time yeah yeah okay so we will be joined by a, a new guest for the first time in a very long time um one of our writers lisa whiteman is going to join us um so she's picked a recent release a classic and she's going to tell us about an artist she loves so they are the recent releases never let me go by placebo and yes that is a recent release they had released new music um <laughs> the classic is the doors by the doors and she'll be telling us why she loves augustine's or augustine's we still need her to tell us how to pronounce it um and i'm picking a new release by coffee called gifted cool where are you two uh, I, I'm, I, go for it matt <laughs> go for it Sam. <laughs> i should have picked one of you really uh, mine is um, Denzel Curry, uh, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Good time. And I've picked the Wet Leg album, which is called Wet Leg. Wet Leg. Oh, God. Wet Leg. Yeah. Yeah, here we, we go. Got to see. We got to see what the Wet Leg fuss is all about. Cool. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.